I found Waldo. I found him at the laundromat last week. According to the world, where's Waldo? It's actually where's Wally, but called Where's Waldo in North America. It's a British series of children's puzzle books created by the English illustrator Martin Hanford. The book contains series of d detailed double page spread illustrations depicting dozen or more people doing very variety of amusing things at a given location. Readers are challenged to find a character named Wally hidden in the group. Now, things are backwards. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I was going to. I got it here. I'll put the link on our family webpage. But O-D-L-A-W. O-D-L-A-W. Wally's Nemesis. And... What it is, O D L A W, is Waldo spelt backwards. Gee, when I grew up as a kid, you could play your records backwards and you would get the devil. So, okay, now get on to the real thing. I found Waldo. Waldo Peter. Approximately 1140, 1218, a French religious reformer, after whom the Waldisians, not Walt Disney, Waldisians are named. It's too bad that Christians know more about Walt Disney than they know about Walt Disney. He sent out disciples known as poor men to read to the common people from the Bible. Oh, he preached with without ecclesiastical authorization and was excommunicated. His protests against doctrines and practices of the Roman Catholic Church were strong tremors, foretelling the coming of the spiritual earthquake called the Reformation. So here's a man. Associated with the Waldisians, before and the coming of the Reformation, and he's preaching on to the poor people, and he's preaching against the Catholic Church. Many details about Waldo are not known. We don't even know if Peter was his real first name since it doesn't appear in any documents until 150 years after his death. But I know one thing. His name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. His last name was most likely something like Valdez or Valdez V-A-U-D-E-S or Valdo where you would get Waldo was the Italian adaptation. Historians disagree over whether he died between 1205 and 1207, or between 1215 and 1218. In 1170, Waldo was very wealthy, well-known merchant in the city of Lyon. He had a wife and two daughters and lots of property. But as something happened, Waldo became deeply troubled about the spiritual state of his soul and desperately to know how he could be saved. Some say he witnessed the sudden death of a friend. Others say he heard a spiritual song of a traveling mistral. But not sure. He said, not sure about things. The first thing he resolved was to read the Bible. Things have changed, haven't they? But since it only existed in the Latin Vulgate, and his Latin was poor, now remember Vulgate was the common man's language, 
Koinine is the common man's language. Now listen to this. He got under conviction. He opens the Bible, reads the Bible, has a hard time reading the Latin Bible. He hires two, skier, sky, sky, two scholars to translate into the dialect so he could study it. How lazy are we today? Between 1170 and 1180, Waldo commissioned a cleric from Lyon, L-Y-O-N, to translate the New Testament into a common monolithic romance, Franco Provenco. So, we are looking at Waldo that many Christians don't even know. And he's association of the Reformation, and he's involved in bringing us the Bible in common language. Sorry, I gotta whip my whistle every once in a while. So after he got a Bible and read the Bible and had the Bible put in his language, next he sought spiritual counsel from a priest. Now hold on. Well, listen, I mean, you got this. This is a remarkable story of a remarkable man that God, a priest, he went to a priest who pointed him to the rich young ruler in the Gospels and quoted Jesus in Luke eighteen twenty two. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing: sell all that thou hast. And distribute unto the poor. Thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Now that's that's salvation by works. But Jesus' words pierce Waldo's heart. Like the rich young ruler. Now remember, he was healthy, wealthy. Waldo suddenly realized he had been serving mammon, not God. But unlike the rich young ruler who walked away from Jesus, Waldo repented and did exactly what Jesus said. He gave away all that he had to the poor after making adequate provisions for his wife and his daughters. From that point on, he determined to live in complete dependence on God for his provision. Waldo immediately began to preach from his Bible in the streets of Lyon, L-Y-O-N, especially to the poor. We have a street preacher. And it's remarkable that I am a street preacher, and many Christians, uh, what are you doing? You're turning people away. Street preaching is historic. Many were converted. By 1165, a sizable group of men and women had become Waldo's disciples. They too gave away their possessions and were preaching. The women as well as the men. Going all the world and preach the gospel. The people began to call themselves poor of lions, the poor of Lombardy, or just the poor of God. That's kind of remarkable because a lot of the see in church, God says to the church, we're rich, we have no need of nothing. And yet God says, you're poor, you're miserable, you're naked, you're blind. This man is totally opposite from the lad to see in church age. He's way before the Laodicean church age. Later, this group grew into a movement that spread through France and other parts of Europe, and they became known as the Walt Disney, Walt Disneyans, not Walt Disney. And I would advise you to look and get, and is 
quite interesting study. Sometimes hard. Find you an old book about the Waldensian and read them. Read about these people. About that time, Waldo began to preach and teach publicly based on his ideas of simplicity and poverty. Notably that no man can serve two masters, God and mammon. That's, he'd be preaching against the church today. Waldo condemned what he considered a, the popal excesses and Catholic dogmas, including purgatory and trans sub, sub you know, where they, the wafer turns into the body and blood of Jesus. You can't say the word. He said that these dogma, dogmas were the harlot from the book of Revelation. Ooh, boy. And they say, I'm bad. He was the leader of the Walt Disneyans, not Walt Disney, and a Christian spiritual movement of the Middle Ages. Peter Waldo is regarded as the founder sometime between 1170 and 1177. He gave away his money to live in poverty and preach the gospel. You read about the Laodicean church age? Having persuaded a sympathetic priest to translate large sections of the New Testament from Latin into the regional language, the common language, the Vulgate, Nicolaine. Peter wandered through Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S, that's a city, the message of Christ to anyone that would listen to him. He soon had the Gospels memorized. Well, how do I memorize scripture? You put it in work, you put it in practice, you put it to study. You know how I learned John 3, 16, Romans chapter 10, uh, Acts 16, 31, Isaiah 1, 8, you know how I remember those? You know how I know those? Because I preach those verses week after week after week after week. Repetition. A number of young men, impressed by the intelligence and sincerity, followed him and given away their possessions and found a new joy and freedom in living according to the spirit of the gospel. The Walt Disney, Walt Disney Walt, I, don't, I hope you don't say I'm saying Walt Disney. The Walt Disney's become to be known as the message was too important to be checked by the traditional Catholic Church. The Walt Disney continued to live by their understanding the New Testament rather than the procedures of the Catholic Church. The Walt Disney movement was Chris was characterized from the beginning by lay preaching, voluntary poverty, and strict adherence to the Bible. They refuse to accept the assistance of purgatory because it's not in the Bible. They said if it's not in the Bible, we don't believe it. We don't preach it. They rejected the practice of venerating the saints for the same reasons. Not in the Bible. And the veneration is you're honoring saints above other saints. You know, like Mother Teresa, St. Christopher, and St. Louis Louis, and the popes, and that other nonsense. Not just priests, they said, but any person is consecrated to the sacrament bread and wine. So the local church can administer to its members the wine and the bread of the Lord's Supper, not just the Catholic Church. They rejected the authority to structure the Catholic Church as unbiblical. They refused to take oaths and also to partake in war made them unpopular with the secular people as well as the Catholic Church authority. So they wouldn't go to war that's a violation of Romans 13 by the order of the government. But they peacefully, when tortured, peacefully when they were 
threatened peacefully when they were bothered. They didn't take up guns. They just moved on. And we'll see what they're moving on done. His followers were harassed by the Inquisition. They escaped when possible without guns, without swords, into the inaccessible mountain regions of North Italy. And you can read about that. I mean, many of them froze to death. They froze. Many of them, when they took off to their journey, had very little clothes, if no clothes at all, thanks to the Catholic Church. Despite being excommunication and Waldo's death, the Waldensians movement continued to grow for quite a while. It spread into northern Italy, the regions of Spain, Austria, Germany, Hungary, and Poland. So their peacefulness will just move on. We'll move away from our tortures. We'll move from being harassed. And they moved. And so did the gospel move. But the Roman Catholic persecution also continued and grew to severity to the 15th century when the Waldensian ranks had shrunk into a small, obscure community by death. The Alpine valleys of French in Italy. But when the Protestant Reformation burst on the scene in the 16th century, most of the Waldensians became Protestants. They brought on the Protestants. Some priests of Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S, were disturbed by Peter's popularity and tried to curb his activities. In other words, the Catholic Church hated the preaching of Peter Waldo. The Archbishop of Lyons was particularly irked by the uneducated, self-appointed reform movement and moved to squash it. In other words, they weren't educated by the Catholics. They were educated by the Bible. The more Waldo studied the scriptures, the more troubled he became over certain doctrines practices, and governing structure of the Catholic Church. Now why is that? Because the Catholic Church is not in the Bible. The more he read the Bible, the more he saw the Catholic Church was against the Bible. And I always say, if you can get a Catholic witnessing to him, your family, your friends, whoever, you can get them to read the Bible. You got something going. And not to mention, he couldn't approve of the wealth of the Catholic Church. Remember, he was wealthy at his time. He gave up all that wealth. He, spoke, he boldly spoke out against these things. But the Catholic Church officially prohibited lay preaching. You needed to be a priest. Waldo and his ragtag band drew opposition from the church leaders. That would be the Pope, the priests, the cardinals. Peter appealed directly to Pope Alexander III in Rome. They had to explain their faith before a panel of three clergymen, including issues which were then debated within the church, such as the universal priesthood. A saved Christian is a priest. 
It's not taught in the Catholic Church. The Pope responded in 1179 by praising the group's poverty. That's it. He had nothing to say about the false doctrine of his church. Said that because they had no theological training, they could not preach only if the Archbishop of Lyons gave them permission. That's exactly what John Bunyan was charged and was put in prison. John Bunyan would not accept or receive the license that the religious order set forth. I'm going to preach the gospel because God told me to preach the gospel. They rejected the Pope's directive. They were excommunicated at the Catholic Church Council in Verona by the next Pope, Lucius III, 1184. Peter Waldo himself was not heard from after the excommunication of 1184. Which means you can't join the church, you can't go to a Catholic cemetery, you can't be Catholic... Uh, Mass, you can't be Catholic wedding, and you don't get to go to a Catholic hell heaven. I mean, Catholic heaven. Bull, crapiola, who cares? The church is wrong. And the Bible says so. Waldo never intended to leave the church, like Luther, Martin Luther. He held to numerous traditions of the Catholic doctrine, like Luther. Luther and Lutherism during this time, not today, but there, oh, it's a cleaned up Catholic Church, but it's almost the same teachings. It's the same thing. Just what Luther didn't like. But after his excommunication and continuing beyond Waldo's death, the Walt Disney's Protestant like convictions. Increase and solidify. So here are ten things about the Protestant Walt Disney. Number one, they rejected all claims to a, to the authority besides the scriptures. But well, we learned that they, as far as government authority, Romans chapter eleven. They rejected all mediators between God and man except the man Christ Jesus. So Mary was not the go-between. Jesus Christ is the go -between. That's what I preach. I will quote that verse and tell them, the man Christ Jesus, not the woman. I preach that today. They rejected the doctrine that only a priest could hear confession and argued that all believers were qualified. So, you know, they rejected purgatory and thus rejected indulgences like Martin Luther, you know, paying for your sins with money, cash, check. And prayers for the dead. The Mormons do that. They believe the only scripture sanctioned sacraments were baptism and communion. And I believe that. They rejected the churches, which would be the Catholic Church's emphasis on fast and feast days and eating restrictions. You know, like only fish on Friday. And then on Lent, you've got to give up something. They rejected it. So do I. They rejected the priestly, mon uh, the, the monastery chase system. You know, you go to the monastery and you give up things. And the priest he gives up a vow of poverty. And he won't marry any woman. Though he'll go after the altar boys and the nun. You know, the vow of poverty. 
They rejected a vulneration of relics, pilgr pilgrimages, and the use of holy water. Christian, but we're going to go to the Holy Land. They rejected a pope's claim to authority over earthly rulers. And then number 10, I, I agree with them on all this. They evidently rejected the apostolic secession of the pope. In other words, you can't trace the pope to Peter, Simon Peter. What you can trace the pope to is Satan. Now I will post this link on our family website. I have here works. There are 14 works. Now, I quoted and found this information. So I found Waldo. And too many Christians do not know about Waldo. But I bet you they know about where's Waldo. I hope this I hope this was an interesting study for you. Ask you to pray for our family, pray for my daughter, pray for myself, and may you get closer to God and the Word and get further from the world.